Well, hey guys, good morning. It is Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Hope you're having a spectacular start to your day so far, wherever you are. Out here on the West Coast, 7 a.m., uh, daylight savings time. Um, Rancho Mirage, California desert. And uh, as you can see, I've got the great Paul Wolf with me uh, today. Paul, what's going on up there in Salem, Oregon? Well, this is awful early. For me up here, it's still kind of dark. Yeah, but well, I appreciate it. For you, Brent, I get up. Yeah, well, I love that. That's that's cool, man. Thank you. Um, so, guys, look, we're gonna we're gonna get into some serving volley stuff today. I've got a compilation of a video, a compilation of some points from a video that I shot of Paul um, and Tom Smith. I think it was the '65s, right? In, in yes. Irvine, call it three years ago, something like that. Probably. Yeah, about three years ago. And, um, you know, I get a lot of, uh, well, you know, how do we serve and volley at this age over over 60? Um, and and if you can serve and volley, and we're just going to show singles points today, we're not going to get into doubles. But I think the big question a lot of players have, or not the big question is, um, but they're looking for, you know, a fail-safe answer in terms of, I got to have a formula. There's got to be a way to come out of the serve. There's got to be a way to. So it's always like I ask players, well, you know, what do you need to work on with your serve and volley? Well, I got to I got to really work on that first volley in terms of making sure it's aggressive, making sure it's deep, making sure it's this or that. Um, and kind of the unwritten thing is so it doesn't come back. So. Um, you've been I mean, serve, I, well, so. You're coming down here in what in the next two weeks down the yeah. desert from Salem yeah. to play the uh, the Wilson World Tennis Classic, which has been uh, postponed usually the end of January. This year it's April first through eleventh because of the pandemic. But um, you're coming down to play that your first year in the seventies. I'm assuming that you're going to still <laughs> continue to serve and volley, especially off that first serve, um, and you know, what, what is your advice, Paul, in terms of, I mean, your general advice uh, in terms of players going, well, you know, how do you serve and volley at 70 years old? Probably be just a little bit more judicious about when you come in. You don't do it all the time, but um, I'm finding that I can't dominate and hit aces or make unreturnable serves. Just don't hit serves as hard anymore. So you just figure and once in a while, a guy hits a return great return. I can't even move for it. But the way I look at playing tennis is keeping pressure on the other person and see if they can continue to hit winners. If they can, they're more power, but I'm not going to stay out there for three hours in a singles match. Yeah. Well, that's, um, let me actually let me turn the volume down here. Um, so we're just going to keep chatting as we go through this compilation of points. It's about, two minutes and 50 seconds of points here. But the thing that we talked about yesterday when, you know, spur of the moment. Um, and by the way, thank you for, you know, spur of the moment. Hey man, you want to get on this thing tomorrow morning? You said, sure. Um, but we talked about, you know, the, the number one goal to me is to really be consistent with that, with that shot right after the serve. And look, I mean, if you guys, if you look at these points, what you're going to find is that not every point is a serve and a clean first volley put away opportunity. There's a lot of stuff that um, um, that just doesn't go that way. I mean, occasionally you'll find a – occasionally, in fact, let me kind of – I want to get a little bit closer to the video here. Um, occasionally you'll find – not sure what happened here – what have I got? I wonder if I saved the wrong stuff. Could no, have. For, they've all the rest of them been. Okay, good. It's just oh, it shows right. what happens if I don't come. Then yeah. Then well, that's the true. Point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, look. Um, number one goal in my mind, Paul, and I'm going to let you kind of take it from here. Is you know how you think about it more than just hey, if I keep coming in, putting pressure on the opponent eventually if i look at the big picture big picture kind of favors you 
I mean, you, you're, you're going to get passed from time to time, right? Yes. Um, and I think this point right here is kind of a good illustration of, of why, do we not, why do we not have to hit a perfect volley to win the point? I see a lot of players on this return, which, by the way, is as tough as it's going to get, right, other than an outright winner, but it's down low at your feet. It is a half volley. If you were to lunge forward and volley that, it might be tough. Yeah, you'd be so, out of position. Yeah, right. So you might be too close to the net. Yeah. And um, so um, let's see what happens here. Okay. Now, look, this, this is a good example of IC, and I've done this, is you get yourself a um, – you get yourself a good serve out wide. You pull him out. He's 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 given up. Tom's given up, and now the ball's just sitting there. How often? Um, you know, you probably don't do it as often as others, but you know, you know that you know this is wide open, and you start looking at wide open, and you don't see the ball, and and you chunk it. Yes. No Got to really, really, really concentrate on that one. So. Um, so your gold ball count now, total of 18, four in singles, four, uh, eight, or, or 14 in doubles. Um, you and Len Wofford, have you won anything in doubles besides partnering with Lenny? Yes, I played uh, one one with Tom Smith, actually. Okay. All right. That's kind and of ironic. Tom has been, I think he can, uh, has told me that he has won, I think he's won double gold ball. He's won gold balls with, I think, at least, 15, if not 20 different partners. He's kind wow. of a double specialist. Well, totally. Yeah. And is. I think he's won, I think he's won some singles too, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Yeah. So um, anyone who's looking at this might going, oh, okay, well guys, you're just showing, you know, kind of an average player. Uh, no. Um, and you've been on, what is it? F how many, how many World Cup teams? Six, Eight? Six and a half. Six World Cup teams. That's right. Um and you guys have won the gold a couple times or four yeah, times and four two, times. Four, four, it's, it's picking your team. It was not, I was never one on any of those teams. As having, I was blessed to have some uh, wonderful teammates. And so a couple of times, actually one time I was asked to sit out the deciding point by Larry, the great Larry Turville who passed away last year. And uh, he was stepped in to play doubles in my spot. And I said, Hey, it's the team. It's great. And they That's won. Good. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah, pretty tough to say, Larry. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, give us a little more on your on your philosophy, your strategy on serve and volley. Well, the way I look at it is is watching some of the other tennis. I'm not going to overpower anybody with a serve now, and it's more in placement and saying, okay, if I hit a serve here, if I hit it wide, like with Tom, it looks like now I'm looking at. I think almost all of them have been to his backhand because his backhand returns a, is a slice. So it gives me a little bit more time. And if he gets it up high, I have an opportunity to do something with it. If it gets it down low, it's not going to get on me so hard and so fast. Uh, and then, but once in a while I do serve to his forehand because I got to keep him honest and then see what happened to him there. I didn't come into the net. This, this is the one that says, okay, but he does the thing. He comes in the net to finish the point. And say okay i've got to but my philosophy is keeping pressure on somebody if they can continue to play uh, with the pressure on them all the time but place your serve get your first volley in and then say okay now what are you going to do to me can you pass me and then i start looking for tendencies different people have their tendencies of how they prefer to hit passing shots if they have a forehand do they like Everybody that plays me knows that if they're hitting the forehand and coming in the net, where do I like to hit my uh, my forehand if I'm cross court from you, Brent? Where you cover when I play doubles? I always hit it real short because yeah. that way, even if they guess right, the ball's low and they got to pop it up if they can't hit a drop. So yeah. yeah, you just look for tendencies and you start using your head a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, when I worked with Mr. Stowe. Way back in the day, he said, look, even the great players, 
become human if you continue to put pressure on them throughout the match. And, and, you know, I didn't really know if that was true or not. I played, you know, as I was trying to figure out the game, I remember playing one of the top guys in NorCal. We got into a long three set match and the guy had passed me a whole bunch. And I kind of figured, well, this is the test. You know, if I lose this guy, all right, it's, I'm supposed to, yep. um, but let's see. And sure enough for, for two and three quarter sets, I was getting past right and left, but I kept coming in, come, I kept coming in. And finally, at the end of the third set, it was like five all. And here I am. It's, uh, I can't remember what it was, but anyway. Um, and I throw in another first volley that I'd been passed on, you know, a bunch of times. And the guy missed it so badly. I thought, hmm. And the next thing I know is I end up pulling out the match. So I think that really is um, a mental thing that you've got to be able to have a certain volley in singles is that if you continue to keep pressure on them um, and look at the big picture and from, and you just got to accept the reality that part of serving volley is going to be that you're going to get past now and then, and that can't deter you. In fact, maybe it helps you kind of go to school a little bit in terms of what you're going to do in the, in the next upcoming points. Um, all right. Well, look, um, this is great. Um, Anything, anything um, that you feel timing wise that, that, that you need to do in terms of when you serve and come into your split step? Is there a certain time that you look for that to happen? Is there um, anything you can tell us on that? I don't think there's a special time. I think it just comes back uh, 10 years ago. My first volley would have been uh, always within five feet of the net. Now, if you've noticed on these, my first volley is typically, I don't make, even make it to the service line. Yeah. Um, I'm even though my slow, my service slower, I'm slower and I want to be balanced. If I try to rush it in too far, then I'm not balanced. And if I'm not balanced, then I can't make the adjustment. So I just, um, uh, keep my head up and see where that first volley, well, he caught me on that one, but I was still able, I'm still back in the point. Yeah. It's one of those things, uh, almost every one of these first volleys are short of the service line. Yeah. And just, to well, be it, it, I mean, to me, it gets back to, there's not an exact formula. There's not a perfect, uh, you know, method of doing this. You're going to have to improvise from time to time. And that's, that's just part of the deal. Um, but I like the way you described that. Oh, I got to make, I'm not sure why I've got so many serve and stay back points here, but for some reason I do. Um, but, you got to come in and make your, I, I wouldn't even, I mean, serve and volley to me is kind of a misnomer um, because you don't always serve and then volley. There's lots of half volley. Sometimes you maybe put the brakes on early and the ball bounces up and you come in and, and play an approach shot. Um, but you've got to make that transitional shot. And then, as you said, you know, let's just, let's just see what happens and we'll just, and we'll just take it from there as opposed to thinking, well, I got to do something really spectacular with this, with this transitional shot. And, and I think you would agree too, it's just way more value in being consistent in terms of making that, that transitional shot than thinking you got to do something huge with it. Yeah. One last thing that I've noticed but it's, I've, with the points, almost every one of my first volleys, I mean, if I serve to the deuce side, all my volleys, first volleys have been to the ad side to make them move. I'm finding, I'm playing with some younger guys now uh, and a lot of these younger guys are really quick. And so I start hitting to the wide. I mean, I start hitting behind them. I find the faster the guy that I'm playing against, the more often I will start hitting volleys behind them just to keep them honest. So, so you're saying in the seventies, you will never hit behind anybody. <laughs> uh, if somebody can just continue to run me off the court, then like that and get to those cross court volleys. Yeah. Uh, more power to them. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. All right, Paul. Well, listen, looking forward to seeing you um, in the next couple of Two weeks. weeks. Good, yep. good luck in the tournament. Thanks, Man, the singles, you. Uh, you know, the draw's not made yet. And I, don't even think, I don't even think the seeds are up yet. Nope. But just the list of entries in the 70s is like the 27 Yankees. I mean, it's a to grow in there. It is. I was counting through there. I think there are at least nine guys that are entered uh, that have been on the national team within the ten, last 10 years. Incredible. Well, it's good. It's, it's, 
It's uh, for me, it's like the next two years of the, I mean, I'm, I'm so ready for the next age group. Because <laughs> I know my fourth year, my fourth year in my age group is, you know, when all you guys come in is, is rough, but uh, all right, listen, Paul, thanks for getting up early this morning. Really appreciate Thank it. Um, you, Brent. Guys, any questions? Would love to get your feedback on um, on serve and volley, and more specifically, maybe serve and volley as we get older. Uh, you can do that right down below in the in the comments area. You can direct message me at Facebook, or, and or you can shoot me an email, Brent at webtennis.com. Always love to read your stuff and respond. Promise to respond, guys. With that said, it is time to get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day, Paul. Um, we'll 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 see you down here soon. Okay. Thanks, Brent. See you.